what's going on everybody just thought I would take a moment today and show you a little bit about the towing of my 2019 Ram 1500 I've got a pretty light camper uh, in terms of campers uh, but we're gonna see how much it is for this uh, Ram today this is a Salem hemisphere light and we're gonna look at the numbers here and see what this thing weighs but as you can see I've got it hooked up I've got the weight distribution hitch on there already and the truck is sitting pretty level so what we're gonna do today I'm gonna do a, a loop and just see how the mileage is just give you my impressions of the towing and I've got about 7,000 miles in the truck right now so I may also give you a little bit of a 7,000 mile review the dry weight is 5893 so I probably have another 107 pounds of camping stuff in here chairs things like that the tanks aren't full nothing like that but so we'll just go ahead and call it 6,000 pounds camper behind me I'm headed to the gas station and it couldn't come soon enough I have about 10 miles or so until empty so got the truck probably back in November of 2018 and really I'll be honest I've had some problems with it I've had the brake squealing I've had just small stuff the, the motor everything like that has been fine the transmission is fine it's been a very smooth and quiet truck, but I've had issues with the brakes. I had to have a part on the dash fixed that was kind of warped when I bought it. Um, just just quite a few different things. Now I mirror when I, I got the power folding mirrors, so when I fold them in, it keeps trying to fold in after it's folded in and just kind of keeps grinding and bouncing off of itself. Also have a drone when I have people in the cab with me, and so that uh, is embarrassing. And I don't know if it's when you have weight in the cab that it's touching something, maybe in the exhaust system and causing a vibration, but it only does it when I have usually about four adults in the cab. One thing I love about this truck is that I got the bench seat in the front so I can seat three people in the front, I can seat three people in the back. Now if you take the drone away, that's pretty cool. I also got the six foot four inch bed and I really was excited about that because I had a six foot four inch bed on my last truck and I uh, get used to having that space. So done a few light modifications to the truck so far, mostly in the bed actually. I've got a bed rug back there. I put the Mopar utility rails and I just did the uh, and I just did some LED lighting in the bed also and I have a tonneau cover. Outside of that, I did some interior LED lighting, but those were just bulb replacements and stuff like that. So nothing major as far as modifications. Right now, I've got about 6,500 miles on the truck. And so far, I've been seeing pretty good mileage. Now I do have a 321 rear end. And so that's one of the reasons I'm doing a towing test today. I'm planning on going out west this summer with the family to do a vacation. And so I wanna see how this truck is gonna do pulling this camper. This camper only weighs about 6,000 pounds, and that's probably what it'll weigh. We're not going to carry water or anything with us like that. We'll have uh, myself, my wife, and uh, two small children in here along with all of our luggage and whatever gear we're going to bring. So it shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, the, this truck with the 321s, according to Mopar, is rated to tow about 8,000 pounds. And so we should be well under the max tow. And of course, that's only gears. It has the same engine as a 392 rear end, which is ready to tow over 11,000 pounds. So I think I'll be fine. But what I want to see today is uh, how what, what the mileage is going to be. I want to see 
exactly what kind of power I'm going to have. The loop that I'm going to take here is going to be through the Washita Mountains, and so it's going to have some flat, it's going to have some hills, and so we'll see. It'll kind of mimic what I would go through in this trip out west, and so it'll have just a little bit of everything. So when we get up here, I'm going to top off, and we're going to go. I'm going to set the trip meter, and then when we get back, we're going to hand calculate and see what kind of mileage we got pulling this trailer. So I'm just turning around now, made kind of a thir pretty much a 13 mile loop. And I know that that is not, you know, quite a long ways to do a mile per gallon test. And, you know, you're going to get, this is probably going to be the worst I would ever get. And so that's my hope anyway. I am, this has been hilly. You saw the footage. I'm just doubling back the way I came. Sometimes I got behind somebody and I was going a little slower. Uh, when I was out in front, I was no more than 60 miles an hour. So, you know, if you go a little faster, you're probably going to get a little bit less mileage. But if you're on the interstate and you're going flat, you're probably going to get a little bit better mileage. A lot of the driving that I do is just like what you saw. It's a lot of up and down. It's a lot of hills. It's a lot of stopping. And it's a lot of having to get on the throttle to get the camper up the hill. the trailers back there it doesn't hunt so much for gears it spent most of its time in the fifth gear and this is an eight-speed transmission it spent a lot of its time in fifth gear it would go to six I saw seven a couple of times when I got on a really flat stretch it never went into eight I am in tow haul mode so you know you want the gear to be where you have the power and so the truck did a pretty good job of that if you can hear it right now it's in fifth gear at about 2700 rpms and I'm going 60 miles an hour and so, so far so good. I was pleased with how the truck handled. Now I can see what the, <laughs> what the screen says and the miles per gallon, it's not very good. Uh, and couple that with the fact that I have a 23 gallon tank, I'd be stopping quite a bit if I was going on a long road trip with this thing. And that may be what I had to do. So right now it says eight MPG on the dot. It says I've been 14.6 miles. It took me 19 minutes and 25 seconds to do it. And I'm getting overall eight miles per gallon so that should be interesting when we get to the pump I, at least i'm curious at how accurate the computer is sometimes they're accurate sometimes they're not so we'll get to see that here in just a second overall who would buy this truck this is a truck this isn't a truck for somebody that's going to tow a lot i can tell you I, I came from a ram 2500 and it's night and day difference as far as towing towing with this 6,000 pound camper reminds me of towing 13,000 pound fifth wheel that was 42 feet long. That's about the same feeling I get in this 1500 with this smaller camper. Now, most of the time, I'm not towing anymore. That's why I got rid of the 2500. So for 95% of what I do, this truck is fine. Uh, the payload is fine. I'm not putting a whole lot of stuff in the bed. I just want to have a bed to put things in to tow. Uh, I've got a 2,000 pound trailer and you know, I tow a Ranger, a small tractor, things like that. This truck will do all of that. And so it won't do it quite as cool as if you're in a Ram 2500, quite as easy. And it doesn't get as good a fuel mileage either, but gas is not as uh, expensive as diesel, so there's that trade-off as well. And the diesel engine is over an $8,000 option just in the 2500 series. So this truck, I was, I was really pleased with the way it towed. I don't know that I would want to tow much larger of a camper or legally if I even could tow much larger of a camper. So this is probably about the max here. But for most day-to-day -day use, this truck is great. With the 321 gears, it does get fairly good mileage, especially on the highway when you're empty and unloaded. The computer has said 21 to 22. You know, if I've got flat interstate going 70, 75, 
I've gotten that kind of mileage out of it. In town, I'm usually averaging somewhere between 16 and 17, depending on how I'm driving. And you know, the creature comforts in here, this is a big horn, so it's not the loaded out version, but it has, like I said, the bench seat, and I love the room that it has, and it has more room in the back seat than the previous generation did. So it's very roomy on the inside, so this truck will be perfect for somebody that has a family, that tows occasionally, maybe has a small camper. This truck is exactly what you would need. Now, the issues that I've had with the Ram as far as quality control, this isn't new. Ram has recalls. I've had, oh, four to five different Chrysler vehicles just in the last few years, and every one of them has had recalls. I had the Ram 2500. I had a water pump recall. Basically, they said your water pump could fail and leave you on the side of the road. We'll replace it for free. I called to get it replaced. Well, we don't have any water pumps. So the quality issue with Ram, you know, I, I don't know. I keep coming back to Ram because I do feel like I get a lot of value for my money. But at the same time, man, I get sick of just going to the dealer about small stuff. Luckily, it's never been anything major, but it's just an aggravation. So overall, 6,500 miles. I'm semi-pleased with the truck. Am I going to keep it forever? I don't know. We'll see. It's hard for me to keep anything forever, but this truck so far has done everything I've asked it to do. It's just given me a little bit of a headache every now and then. So I'm going to pull up at the pump here in just a second, and we're going to see the results. All right, guys, so made it back to the gas station here. And so this was the loop, 25.7 miles. The computer says 8.7 miles per gallon. Took me 32 minutes to do it. Again, this isn't totally scientific. You know, this isn't TFL where I get on a 100-mile loop and it's interstate and all that. This is real-world stuff, and this is what I drive in. So I wanted to get a taste of what I would be looking at when I go around where I live with a camper on the back. So let's see what the pump says. All right, I used the same procedure this time that I used last time, which was basically set it on the lowest setting on the handle and wait for the one click. That's how I filled it up last time. That's how I filled it up here. So it says 2.67 gallons. All right, so if we go back to the mileage, it was 25.7. So we will do 25.7, and then the pump said 2.67 gallons, and that comes out to 9.6. So according to this test, on this day, this did almost one mile per gallon better than what the computer said. So that's a difference from the old Dodges, because they used to call them the Lyo meters, and so maybe they change the formula or whatever they do to calculate it but at this point in this day on this loop in 25.7 miles hand calculated actually came out to almost a mile per gallon better than the trip computer so there it is i'm uh, pretty pleased with that if i can get 9.6 in the hills and you know the mountains and stop and go a lot of acceleration you know not a lot of flat driving I would suspect I could get somewhere between 10 and 11 on the interstate, especially over a long distance. This was, uh, this was short stuff, so it's hard to have a you know, 400, 500 mile guesstimate of what your mileage would be. But if it doesn't get any worse than that, and I don't assume that it would unless I'm going over the Rockies or something like that, but overall, pretty pleased with the truck. So hope this video helped you if you're looking at a Ram. You know, a lot of people you know, say if you're going to tow anything, get the 392s. And you know, you can hear the truck winding up right now. I'm in second gear at 4,000 RPMs going 40 miles an hour. So that's in tow haul mode. I did this whole test in tow haul mode. But, you know, a lot of people will say, get the 392s if you're going to tow anything. I don't know. This truck doesn't seem any low on power at all, especially off the line, which is where the 392s would shine. I, I didn't have any issue taking off. I didn't have any issue pulling it out of the pasture where I had it in the grass. So it, it decreases your overall tow rating and capabilities. However, you know, if you're not gonna be towing that kind of weight and if you're not gonna be towing all the time, the 321s are, you know, very capable and they're very good on the highway, especially as it pertains to mileage. On the interstate at 70, 75, I'm not turning near as high RPMs as somebody with 392s would. You know, this is, this is enough truck for me today. So tomorrow may bring something entirely different. Would I like to have a diesel sometimes? Sure. Do I need it? Absolutely not. 
but we'll see what the future holds. So I hope this video helps, and if you like more videos like this, stay tuned. There's always something going on. Thank you.